Welcome to this episode of Now That's Something Good, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary in the everyday ordinary. Now here's your host, Sarah Good. Welcome back to Now That's Something Good. How is your new year going so far? The first few weeks of January, we wanted to focus in on stories to help all of us live more intentionally. If you've missed an episode, make sure to go back and listen to the first few we've had out this year. And if you are brand new to Now That's Something Good, welcome. We are so glad you are here with us. We are passionate about sharing good things, sharing stories, and exploring the extraordinary and the everyday ordinary together. Make sure to subscribe wherever you podcast so you don't miss an episode. And if you're enjoying our show, would you take a minute and review it on your favorite platform? It helps others find these stories and conversations and means a lot to Will and I. Today on the show, we have my friend, Jenna Barbosa. Jenna is really a true delight. She is an author, speaker, coach, counselor, and an incredible woman on a mission to help others be more resilient. So here we go. Come along with me as we chat with my friend, Jenna. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. I am so excited for you to meet my friend, Jenna. Hey, Jenna, <laughs> thanks for being here. Uh, thanks for having me. I am super excited to just hang with you for a while. I love it. So Jenna, I've actually, we've already been hanging out for a little bit. So this is a little different. We needed to catch up, right? Yep, yep. And let me just tell you guys, you are in for a treat. My friend Jenna is just an incredible person, an incredible human being. I know you're going to be so blessed by what she shares with us today. But Jenna and I have a lot of fun together. <laughs> so I feel like there just needs to be a little disclaimer from the beginning, right, Jenna, <laughs> that people just don't know what they're getting themselves into right now. So just hang with us. It's going to be fun. So Jenna, just start off. Tell us a little bit who you are, your life, your world, all whatever you want. Tell us. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for all that sweet words. And uh, yeah, guys, you just don't even know. <laughs> Provide just buckle up. <laughs> yes, buckle up. Oh man. Um, no, I'm definitely very excited to be here, and absolutely just love our friendship, yes. and it's super exciting. Um, so about me, let's see. I am um, a lover who just loves the beaches and the <laughs> long walk. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, no, my name is Jenna, of course. You know, and um, I am 36. I'm going to be 37. It's like freaking me out a little bit, Sarah. But you know what? <laughs> Like, I feel like I'm in my prime. Like, I feel like I just kind of yes. know a little bit more about myself. Yep. And I'm like, okay, this is good. We're going to just rock it into the 40s. Yes. When's your hot. birthday? In February. Okay. So you're coming up. Okay. I'm, I'm a little in. older than you. So, so far, I mean, it's good. Yeah. 37 is a good right. year. Yeah, totally. I'm claiming it. <laughs> yes. Um, no, but I am an emotional freedom coach mm. and I am an author, speaker. Yes. Uh, do some uh, biblical counseling on the side, uh, just as like a certified kind of mentor. Um, and then, oh man, I just, I love all things creative and yes. um, just have a big passion. You know, my personal mission is just to inspire resilience in people and lead them to the heart of Jesus. And so um, I hope, I hope that whenever people encounter me, they they kind of get that vibe. Um, that's really what I try to be consistent with. And man, I just have a lot of fun and yeah, just kind of do my thing out there. I really think that um, going through some hard stuff in life has gotten me to the point to where I'm able to say like, you know what, this is me, like unapologetically. Yeah. Love and, it. Um, but I'm able to have confidence in kind of what I bring to the table. And it's exciting to just learn from others and all that good stuff. So yeah. yeah so um, that's kind of just high level about me. You've got a, um, you are a woman who wears many hats I lo- and I love it. Thanks. Yeah. It definitely, uh, I have a, a hat box in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Many hats. Uh, but no, I actually love it that way more so than just staying in one thing. Yeah. Like I set kind of my career up a little bit to where I was able to to do that and have some versatility. So I, I like love it. it. Okay, well, before we dive into some of these things, and we're going to be, I don't even know where we're going to go. We're just going to go all <laughs> over the place and just see where the conversation goes. It's like I said, be, buckle up. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great. Yes, buckle up, listen fast, <laughs> just stay with us. Okay, Jenna, I feel like though to start, people need to know, like, how how do we know each other? Do you want to tell the story? Do you remember? I mean, yeah. Okay, tell yeah. the story. So uh, Fearless Women is an organization that we volunteer with and yeah. just plug for Fearless Women. Y'all yes. need to go check it out. It's yes, about fear, do. dealing with fear and anxiety, helping you be equipped. And our good friend Christy Bulware is founder and president of that, and yes. it's just amazing. Um, so they were doing a conference, and uh, so our other good friend Katie Bynum, yes. poor sweet thing, got yes. – 
sick. Like the so it was she emceed. Horrible. Yeah, oh poor thing. Like we emceed. So Katie and I were the MCs for the yeah. first day. And then sweet Katie got sick that night and couldn't come back the second day. And then Christy pulled you in. Yes. And then I had like heard of you. I think we just like have heard of each other, but yeah. we never really connected. Yep. And so all of a sudden she's like, all right, you guys two are emceeing together. And um, we just like instantaneously kind of clicked with our personalities. Yes. And we're like, oh, dude, we got this. Like, <laughs> Got we this. had so much fun. I don't know if anybody else had oh, fun with us, but we were having the time of our life. We really were. We were like, okay, we're either gonna like get up there and just talk the whole way and like forget what we actually have to say. Yes. Or yeah. we're gonna like, yeah, just totally run it off. So it was fun. We kind of became, I feel like, professional MCs after that. Right. Because we mean, did a few more. We did. Of the conferences and, and meetings and yeah. yeah. But I, you know, I I've, I've never MC'd before. And um, really? was that your first? Yeah, that time? was my first MCing. What? I've only done a little bit, but I feel like we, I mean, so if anybody needs MCs, Jenna and I are pretty much professional <laughs> MCs now. So feel we free really to reach are. out to us and we'll come MC your event. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and we are fun. We bring the fun. That's true. That is very, very true. But that was fun. It started it was this so kind fun. of cool relationship, friendship, yeah. and here we are. Yeah. So, okay, Jenna, we got to, okay. I don't even know where to start because there's so many great things. I want to hear, I do want to start. You in 2020 yeah. officially became an author. You've yes. written things before, but like a published book. Yes. Amazing. I actually got to, I mean, that was super fun for me. Yeah. Is you launching your book? You asked me to kind of come help do your launch party. And yeah. it was a highlight for me mm-hmm. in 2020 for sure, just to get to, to do that with you. But yeah. talk about the book, Tenacious Grace, uh-huh. and just kind of where it came from and then whatever of the story that kind of led you to the material of that book. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that was so fun to do that launch with you. Talk about emceeing. You were emceeing that thing like a champ for me. I loved it. (laughs) It was really fun. It was. Um, We had a really great time doing that. Uh, But yes, it was so crazy to be able to launch a book in 2020 in the midst of all this craziness with the pandemic. And, you know, but it was so cool. So the book is Tenacious Grace, like you said, uh, redefine your relationship with food and end emotional eating. And so it is a journey that I have walked through. um, And it's so cool that God's timing is just so perfect, right, Sarah? Because absolutely, literally, if I would have published last year when I was on set to or I was set, you know, on course to publish, but I lost like some data and it pushed my whole timeline back like six to seven oh. to eight months. And uh, I was just beside myself. Mm-hmm. But, you know, looking back on it, God's timing was perfect because if I would have launched it in 2019, I would have had to very, very actively start a conversation around emotional eating. Okay. In 2020, when everybody's in quarantine and realizing, oh my gosh, I'm just eating my feelings all the time because I'm home and bored and stressed yes. and anxiety and all these yes. things. Everybody starts talking about emotional eating on social media and like laughing about it. And so I literally got to step into a conversation that was already happening. And it it. just was like, God, that is so you, right? Yes. To just roll the red carpet out and and allow, yes, some pain in my life with the frustration of the timeline and all that good stuff. But man, to step into that conversation was really powerful for me to just see very effectively God's timing, how perfect it is. But um, yeah, the book really came from my own, honestly, my own frustration. Okay. You know, I've struggled with uh, food really since mid twenties when I was, um, when I was in a, just a toxic relationship Mm -hmm. and really just kind of got connected with like, okay, food is the the one thing I feel like I can control, which it ends up controlling you when it's from an emotional place that is not, you know, meant to meet emotional needs, Um, you know, it can bring joy when you're gathering around a table and breaking bread together or whatever. But um, it was, I was using it to cope with major emotions within me um, that I didn't understand. And yeah, so with that dynamic, um, I really started struggling and um, put on a lot of weight during that relationship and just lost, really lost a lot of myself Mm -hmm. and really just didn't understand where I couldn't get back on board with the whole like diet and mm, exercise yeah. and was just like, what? You know, I'd start for seven days and I'd fall off the bandwagon. I was like, what the heck is wrong? And um, so it just, you know, it got to a point where I was like, okay, God, there's got to be something different because mm-hmm. we know how to lose weight and eat healthy and right. and put on muscle and gain weight. And like, you know, we know how to change our body to a healthier dynamic, whatever yeah. spectrum you're on to begin with. So it's like the how is not the answer 
obviously it is an answer, but it's like there's something missing because why do we keep coming back around right, and right. getting back to square one and being like, okay, well, I already did this journey and now here I am again yeah. struggling and needing to find yet another how-to program. And I just was like, I just don't want to live the rest of my life constantly chasing how-to programs right, to right. overcome a struggle. Like there's definitely how-to programs to help you stay healthy and, and you know, do certain things, you know, like good detoxes or whatever. Yeah. But um, I really just was like, I have got to figure out this different way. And so right. it started not even as a book. Okay. It started as support groups. Okay. And so I just was like, you know what? I know girlfriends who struggle with this. Let's just get together. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a vocal processor, if you have not noticed. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> and so I'm like, I just got to talk it out. And I know that they are struggling too. Let's just get together and yeah. figure this out. So I got about six to seven women for the first group together. And as I was kind of preparing for like questions to ask and yeah. before I knew it, um, I could not get the the curriculum mm. out fast enough. Wow. God was just downloading these like questions and the structure to it yeah. and all that stuff. And so we did one group. It was, it started out as like a 21 week group and it's okay. dialed down to like a 12 week type of course yeah. now. Um, but we went through the first group and then the second group. And at the end of the second group, um, God was just really showing me like you you have a book here like now you need to get the like the grit and the meat yeah. of what I'm teaching you in your heart about all these things that you're applying to your own life and seeing some freedom happen out to the world. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. um went back and reformatted the curriculum into a book and then um took the next 3 years and you know it was totally a god thing Sarah because I was also doing my master's program oh my in business goodness. wow and writing a book and I was like I am an insane person talk about wearing many hats yeah that is- <laughs> <laughs> I was like you want me to what god yes yeah but um it was beautiful though how it it worked together in in some you know behind the scene details of how that worked but uh Getting the book together and and getting that out there was really was really a powerful thing because I learned a lot about myself in the right. writing process and so that's really where the book came from. It started as a support group just to be okay. able to get answers to saying yeah. like, hey, I'm a fellow struggler. Yeah, um, I'm not saying I know all the answers here. Let's figure it out together. Let's get in the trenches together and just be like, what the heck is happening here that right. we just keep circling back around. So that's where the book came from. I love it. So just, okay, Jenna, tell us real quick, just so if people don't know or they're new to like what Mm. emotional eating, just can you kind of give us like what's the quick textbook definition of emotional eating or what you use just so everybody, we're kind of all on the same page. Yeah, that's really good. Um, So I kind of in a funny way will say um, if you are at a party Mm -hmm. and you're in the room with people chatting and the food is in the kitchen and you hear it talking to you. Okay, that's a good You're an emotional eater. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of people probably going like virtually raising their hands or being yes, like, like, I've mm-hmm. had that happen. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's really kind of where you just feel this like inordinate, like underlying pull toward food. Yeah. yeah. Where it's just you think about it a little too much, right. you feel a little too passionately about okay. it. Like okay. you know, and like that that's just really where that is. And truly emotional eating is where when you are trying to cope with an emotion yeah. um that you A don't understand or B understand and are just coping with it. Okay. Um and you're using food to do that is where that emotional eating really comes from. So even in my book, I talk about in the first chapter. Um, the difference of emotional eaters and overeaters. Okay. Yep. So like overeaters are typically people who don't really have an emotional relationship with food. They just maybe aren't on, like they're just maybe not being intentional with what they're thinking and like listening to their body and they'll just kind of get stuffed at a meal and they'll be like, oh man, that was a lot. And then the next day they're back on track and just taking care of their body and doing what they need to do and listening to their body. Yeah, An emotional eater will basically have this mentality. Oh man, I overate. I feel bad. I feel guilty. Now Mm. might as well just sabotage the rest of the week and just go ahead and eat the rest of the things. Okay. Okay. And so it's, yeah, it's like one tire goes flat. Instead of fixing it, you slice the other three tires and (laughs) until you're (laughs) fed up. That's a good, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And so in the book, can you give us just like maybe one, if somebody's listening and going like, hey, okay, I, I do struggle with this. What do I do? First of all, get Jenna's book. <laughs> Tenacious <laughs> yes, Grace. Get that. We'll give a plug. We'll put it in the show notes where you can find it because there is so much just good, helpful practice. Mm-hmm. Just 
when I was reading it, it helped me rethink like, oh gosh, like I didn't even realize this was an issue or why it would be an mm-hmm. issue reading it going, okay. But there's a lot of stereotypes. You and I have talked about this before about yeah. like what emotional eating looks like, mm-hmm. who it affects, who it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Can you just talk a little bit about like who, who does, let's start there. Who does emotional eating affect? Yeah. <clears throat> so it affects anybody who has emotions. That's <laughs> I love it. Anybody who has emotions. So yeah. Everyone. <laughs> so um no, but for real, like, you know, it's not it's not a body issue. Mm-hmm. It's it's really a heart issue. And it's um a need for security or a need for love at its very core. Okay. And so um if you are somebody who um you know, I've had like I've had women who are in the groups that are like straight up bodybuilder women, and yeah. I mean, it really blew my stereotype out when I first started because I had uh, my second group. I had this woman who came in and she was a bodybuilder and a personal trainer, and literally, like, it put me to shame because I was I looked at her and I was like, "What the heck are you doing here?" Yeah, because me being more on the overweight side, like pretty much my whole adult life, um, I just immediately thought it was like an overweight person mm. issue, yeah, you know, okay. not like, or like somebody who had like an actual eating disorder right? who had like, you know, major disordered eating. Yeah. <clears throat> and so when I saw her, I was like, what are you doing in here? And it, but getting to know her and getting to know her, I didn't ask mm. her that, but like. <laughs> <laughs> I did. That was a rhetorical question. Yeah. Just <laughs> in my brain. <laughs> um, but, you know, getting to know her and getting to know her story, I was like, oh, yeah, mm-hmm, that makes sense. Because yeah. anytime food takes on more power than it was intended to have, mm. um, that is when it connects internally to a security place that really is intended for God. Okay. And you yeah. can replace food in my book with something else, like, yeah. you know, whether it's drugs, whether it's um, dependence on substance or yeah. a behavior or a person, like it's something that we give power to that God did not intend for that yeah. thing or that person to have. That's good. Well, Jenna, I know like we're getting ready to start a new year. Actually, when we're recording this, this is the last day of the 2020, which is crazy. So crazy. Partly ready to say good riddance, and Uh but that's okay. That's we'll talk about that in a minute. (laughs) But you know, it is very culturally, at least in the United States, that Mm -hmm. a lot of people have a goal to either I want to lose weight this next year, I want to get healthier, and I feel like a lot of the language has changed, at least somewhat, of like, hey, let's be healthier. Maybe not. We put better language in terms to it, Mm -hmm. which is good. Mm -hmm. But if somebody's like, hey. I'm kind of seeing a pattern here. Maybe I've got some problems. What would be like a first step that somebody could take to just kind of start moving in the right direction of overcoming yeah. emotional eating? Or yeah, I think that um, besides getting my book, <laughs> yeah, besides, <laughs> no. besides um, reading Jenna's book, right, right. do that. <laughs> um, honestly, I think the very first thing would be a paradigm shift. I would okay. encourage every single person to. Commit to a process versus a result. Okay. Um, because we live in a culture that is very result driven and there is yeah. a time and place for results. Like I have very much of an achiever type of personality yeah. where results are important. Yeah. When it comes to overcoming an internal struggle hmm. that is emotionally tapping us out, um, we've got to recognize we did not get here overnight. So we're not going to get out of here overnight. That's. That's good. You need to say that again. We That's did not good... get here overnight, so we are not going to get out of here overnight. <laughs> like... That's good because we often so think like, "Oh my god, I'm going to start this." And why do so many New Year's goals fail? Because mm-hmm. you know, January second comes and we're like, "Why didn't I lose 15 pounds?" Over right. I worked out one time and ate a chicken salad. Right, like, right. Oh, why am I not seriously? Really? Yes. Well, and it's and I say this a lot. If you've heard me speak, anybody, you've probably heard me say this, but like. We do what we know, or we do what we believe. We don't do what we know. Hmm. And so if I That's know that food is not going to fix an emotional need in my heart, yeah. but I but I believe in the moment it will, Yeah. Um, then if I just try to change the behavior that is attached to a belief, I'm not going to get anywhere until I change what I believe. Yeah. Right? That's good. Yeah. And so we have a belief system that actually started in the garden. And I talk about mm. this in the book. Eve, you know, believed, yeah. oh, this fruit can give me something that actually only God can give mm-hmm. me. Um, and so just there's some kind of deception there that we sometimes don't know has happened, yeah. but we just all of a sudden are now believing, um, okay, so food can give me something that really is intended for God. But if we don't take the time to look at those belief puzzle pieces, yeah. 
we're basically trying to put a puzzle together and change the the pieces how they fit together, which is that workout piece or that diet piece. Yeah, we're trying to fit those together blindfolded, mm-hmm. and it just it's frustrating and it takes us forever, and um, we don't we don't end up doing it successfully. And so it has to be a shift from this like quick, you know, lose whatever pounds and right. whatever days. And, right. Well, yeah, you can do that. Those programs work yeah. if you stick to them. Yeah. But it's a behavior change. Mm. It's not a heart change. Yeah. And so really, I always just tell anybody who's going through my book and this program is number one out of the gate. You've got to commit to a process and not a result. That's huge. That's huge. Jenna, just tell it. So I know some of this all connects. You started in 2020. It really has, like I said, wrote a book. Yep. Started a new, you were just telling me, a new nonprofit. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about this because they do kind of go hand in hand a little bit, right? Yeah, absolutely. So... um the nonprofit we're we haven't like officially launched it, launched it okay. yet out there. But Did I we, just say I didn't say no, something. We're gonna give it? a teaser. Okay. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, oopsie. <laughs> Surprise. Edit, sorry. Edit. sorry, 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 Jenna. No, <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine. Um, it'll be a good teaser. I'm a big fan of like throwing information out there, okay. kind of you know, wetting the whistle. <laughs> No, it's fine. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> you did. That's something good. It's something good happening. That is funny. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, no, it's good though. It's uh, <clears throat> so it's gonna. It's called Resilient Ministries. Okay. And uh, really, the mission behind Resilient Ministries is to help you build better relationships with God, self, and others by teaching you how to experience, embrace, and express your emotions. Love it. And so uh, the first program. So it's going to be program based okay. to where we have programs that we launch that help you dig deep. Um, we want to go deep, not wide. Yeah. And so um, with the first program that we launch is going to be Tenacious Grace. So I just kind of put it underneath the nonprofit so that we'd be able to really collaborate with other nonprofits in a bigger way yeah. um, to get out and deal with things. Um, we have one element of it that I'm super excited about. It's called our, it's our outreach program. Okay. And um, that's going to be where it filtrates into any program that we're doing. And we look at what's out there. So like the food, right? So we have a food yeah. issue with... Um, this. So we want to be able to connect with people who struggle to find their next meal and get in and serve them and say, yeah. how can we come into your community and feed you for a day or feed you yeah. or just attend to you, serve you, however that looks, right? Wow. Um, or partner with nonprofits out there that are doing that. Yeah. Uh, because oftentimes when we are struggling with something, um, one of the things, not the only thing, but one of the things that helps us overcome that is to serve in the very area that we're that we're struggling. That's huge, yeah. Because it gets us to a bigger perspective of our own issue and say, mm, I'm not the only one that struggles with this. And mm, am I really looking at this and giving it way more power than it needs to have? Wow. Because when we're misusing food and people are dying for their next meal, wow. you know, yeah. and that's not a guilt trip. Don't hear me say that. Like, you know, I don't want to be like so cliche that it's like, oh, people are dying in Africa, you know. Right. But right. there is a very real reality that um, when we're coping with something versus taking those needs to God to have Him meet those and to be able to process them responsibly, yeah, um, there there is an accountability there. You know, it's it's something that we've got to put in perspective, yeah. and so. That is one thing um, that, and and with that, it brings joy because it's like it, it changes our perspective yes. of the thing that we're struggling with. Yeah. Um. So, I love um, it. We want to do that, and so it's going to be fun. We're going to launch it out uh, probably. I don't know when. I'm not going to say yet. But, yeah. Don't um, <laughs> say. Don't, yeah. We don't. Ha- we won't hold you to beginning a date, at twenty, like beginning ish. You know, yeah. be- beginning middle of uh, 2021. But yeah. yeah. And are you as a part of the tenacious grace? Is there? Do you still have like the support groups? M- what's you yes, offer the, other services about if people are kind of dealing or feeling like, you know what, maybe I have an emotional eating problem yeah. or want to know more yeah. outside of the book. Mm-hmm. What else is is there? Absolutely. So we um, are changing up some model structure on that. Okay. Um, so instead of the support groups, we're going to do courses. Okay. So you can purchase course- courses to be able to kind of just self-regulate like how yeah. when you study that, but it gives you... It gives you me on video. So it'll be me teaching and giving you those courses so that you get the author of the book, you get me to be able to kind of teach you through that in in the course structure. And um, then there'll be monthly coaching calls that I'll be on to help walk you guys through some stuff. And um, then also we are going to certify other people in um, to be coaches. And so people will be Tenacious Grace coaches um, and they can, you know, take people on as clients and, and, you know, so it's it's a good thing to be able to help them 
you know, have some yeah. income coming in, but also just to help other people um, with the same curriculum. So we'll certify coaches in, in each program. Okay. Um, and then we'll also have just Resilient Ministries, the Emotional Freedom. Love it. It's going to be its own curriculum as well. So there will be Emotional Freedom coaches just like myself. So cool. Okay. Can we, Jenna, I feel like for a second, because we've had the idea of like coaches come mm-hmm. up several times on our podcast yeah. recently. And I feel like that is, an, it's been going on. Like people have had life coaches or different mm-hmm. things, but I feel like it's becoming more common. Yeah. And I feel like maybe people still, you know, sometimes I would be like, well, what would be the benefit of a coach? Yeah. So can you just talk about that in general? I'm sure you hear about it with your account, like just across mm-hmm. the board, more than just even the coaches that you would have or for your program. But like, why would somebody, what yeah. would be the benefit to that? For somebody to be like, hey, I just need some extra help. What does that look like? Definitely with the coaching industry, it's definitely newer on kind of on the scene within the last, I'd say, like 20 years-ish. And really how I kind of differentiate counseling and coaching is really saying counseling takes you from past hurt to present healing. Okay. And coaching takes you from present healing to future growth. Okay. That's good. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. And so with the coaching, obviously there's some stuff that still needs to happen within healing. But yeah. if you think of um, think of surgery, like if you if I uh, if I break my ankle, right, yeah. and I go into the doctor, he would be my counselor. My okay. physical therapist would be my coach. Okay. And so sometimes with counseling, not sometimes with counseling, you need to get in there and do the surgery mm-hmm. part. That's the healing part of that. Yeah. But then you have coaching that says, okay, I've had the surgery. Like I've gotten to a place to where I'm able to somewhat be functional, right? Yeah, but I yeah. just need that extra person to tell me how to bend these certain emotional muscles, how to think a little differently, yeah. how to do this, put some accountability in place, yeah, and help build those muscles to support what has just been healed. Okay. So um love that. Yeah. that makes so much that helps me. <laughs> I love that. That's like a great I'm gonna have to use that and be like my my friend Jenna who's very smart told me this is what it is. Because yeah. that makes you do like you can't yeah. really move forward with some of mm-hmm. the life things that a coach would help with if mm-hmm. you're still dealing with some of the other stuff that you just need to kind of yeah. have some help with. Absolutely. And with um, Resilient Ministries, we'll work very closely with True Vine Christian Services, which is um, my family-run uh, agency Yes, that uh, my mom is president, my brother is CEO of, and um, we work very closely with counseling. So what happens is... Uh, just ethically a coach and part of the certification will be teaching the coaches how to recognize signs okay. where somebody is like, oh gosh, we just hit something that brought up some memories and yeah. okay, we need to pause and we need to get you into some counseling yeah. to kind of work through that, get some surgery done um, and then come back to the coaching. So we're going to work very closely with them to be able to help give resources that is needed and help Love the, it. the clients. Okay, that's huge because I feel like everybody listening. I mean, I think sometimes like we hear these terms and just yeah. aren't aren't sure. Okay, Jenna, let's talk about the counseling mm-hmm. part too yeah. because that is something that has come up a lot on our show. Mm-hmm. We are huge. Will and I are huge. Just mm. you, we need help, and there's nothing wrong with that. But mm-hmm. I do still feel like sometimes in our world there's a little bit of a stigma still, even though I think great strides have been made to kind of bust down those myths or anything like that there's something wrong with you if you need counseling. But can you just talk to us a little bit about like why why counseling is such a needed thing? Mm. And just, I mean, we would tell people anybody, like whether you think you you need, like Mm -hmm. just even coming in for like a tune-up just to go check. So can you just talk a little bit about that or help maybe break down some of the stereotypes or myths about counseling or I'm going to see a counselor or what all, cause I'm sure you hear it all. Uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> <clears throat> totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, counseling is so important because really at the core of it, we don't know what we don't know. That's, that's good. Like yeah. if I said, Hey Sarah, what is, um, the square root of 999? <laughs> Quickly, no tell me oil. right now. Tell me, Sarah. <laughs> right, ask the wrong person. But aren't you supposed to know? Right. <laughs> I but, don't know. Yeah, for real. Uh, but even, I mean, that's just, you know, a simple, you know, kind of a uh, picture of it. But you just, we cannot know what we just don't know. And yeah. so yeah. sometimes, so say if, you know, Will was over here going like, oh, I know. Yeah. And he's going to tell you. And then I'll be like, okay, Sarah, now tell me. And you'd be like, okay, now I know. Yeah. Yeah. So we need somebody outside of ourselves to give us new information. Yeah. Information is power. Information allows us to see differently. It's yes. like the glasses for our souls. Yes. And so we're able to see a different lens mm. of what is happening beneath the surface. Yeah. Um, and there are times where we see, you know, in the counseling relationships um, with our clients that they're saying, I would have never been able mm. to see that if you would not have pointed that out. Yeah. 
but it makes so much sense. And then they are able to take that information, yeah. see their selves differently, see that soul level need differently, and yeah. move forward in healing and freedom. Love it. So it is something that has a, definitely a negative connotation to it. It also is newer on the scene. Mm-hmm. Um, the insurance companies have just within the last probably like 15 to 20 years as well right. really gotten to where they give mental health behavioral health policies. Right, um, right. So it's just, it's always had a stigma, right? Like, yeah. you know, if you need mental health, then you are a crazy person right, or, you know, right. and that a lot of clinical mental health has those, uh, you know, bigger diagnoses out mm-hmm. there that scare people because A, they don't know about those diagnoses. So yeah. we also fear what we don't know. Yes. Yeah. And so... um The more information, again, information is power, right? Yes. So the more information about the mental health field is out there, the more people release that stigma about it and recognize, ah, it's not a crazy issue. Right. It's a human issue. Right. Because we all have brains and we all have neurological connections that happen with our emotions um, and experiences that we go through in life. And so um, part of that, too, is really looking and saying, uh, you know, counseling is something that is needed for people who need help. Hmm. You know, if you were sick, you go to a physical doctor. Yeah. If you, um, you know, are financially sick, you go to a financial doctor. Yeah. You know, as yeah. a financial advisor. Yes. If you have something mentally that is not, um, I don't want to say mentally sick, but like, if if mentally you're struggling to understand yeah. something, yeah, you go to a mental health counselor who right. helps you to see what you're thinking through, right, differently. I love that, Jenna. That's huge because I think so many times we do, there's still just this kind of stigma. I mean, and it's not even anybody around us. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's us. We, we uh, yeah. have this. I mean, for me, that would be my big, like, you know what? I, well, I don't really need help or mm-hmm. I should just be able to get over this. Or if I just wait a couple more weeks, uh-huh. maybe it will, it will get better. Yeah. And oftentimes <laughs> it doesn't get better <laughs> no. on its own. And it's like, no. hey, let's go talk to somebody who knows a little more, like you said, that has yeah. the right lenses to help us see in the right perspective. So yeah. Jenna, talk to us a little bit. So like, why why did you get into counseling in the first place? Why? What happened? Where? Tell me that. I don't, I don't even know that. So you never told me. So. Yeah. Yeah. So we, um, so my mom actually went back when she was 35 for counseling. And okay. so she like went back for her degree. And so wow. we grew up kind of seeing her get into the mental health field. Love it. Um, And, you know, honestly, I think it's just a big calling over our family. My whole family are counselors other than my dad. Like, he's a counselor, like, to people, you know, but not he's, like, not a professional counselor. Um, But it's it's just a big calling, I think, too. Mm. But um, really, my my brother went into it. Um, and then in college, I I was leaning toward that. Like I was kind of, okay. you know, we're always the people that people come to and are like, hey, help me with this. Yes. And yeah. So we just had a passion for it, right? And so in college, I um started going that way. But then I was like, I don't want to do just what my family's doing. I kind of <laughs> rebelled against it, but God used it. Um, so what actually, mine is a little different. I'm not an actual licensed professional counselor. I'm, um, I have certified training okay. in biblical counseling. Yeah. Um, so it's more along kind of a counseling mentor type of, yeah. but not actually like a um, licensed counselor. Okay. So it's yeah. different training. I decided when I was saying earlier, how I kind of set my career up to be able to do a bunch of different things. Yes. I went for my master's in nonprofit nonprofit organization, love it, um, and administration, and uh, that way I'm able to like do all the businessy side that my heart loves, but I'm also to step into mentorship and, and counseling in that in that lane, yeah, um, and to do it from the worldview of the biblical worldview, which is just what I have found in my own personal life that is what brings the most amount of healing. Right. And mix it in with the psychological training that yeah. I do have within my bachelor's program. I love it. God's called you into so many different fun avenues, and it's cool to see you yeah. getting to do that. Okay, Jenna, I feel like this is, because we are recording on the last day, yes. the people will hear this sometime in January. Yes. 2020 has definitely been a year Yes, for all of us. Yes. Like everybody has endured COVID, <laughs> the pandemic, so much. unilateral across the board. Uh-huh. We've all had this. So what would you say, Jenna? I feel like, well, let's start here. What has been the most surprising thing that you feel like you want to share about that has happened that's come out of 2020? Because I feel like mm-hmm. there's been a lot of hard, and you yeah. can, we could say both sides of yeah. it, because I mean, and we can hold both. I think that's mm-hmm. one of the biggest things I've learned even more this year is like two very strong emotions that are opposing can actually reside in the same space. Yes. Something can be very hard, and you can also have joy in the midst of it. You can be Absolutely. sad and have happiness. So 
we can celebrate both, but tell me something like, where have you just been surprised with something out of 2020? Um, well, I would say that the, the biggest thing honestly is, um, Oh, that's a good question. Like, <laughs> cause there's been so many good things. Yeah. Um, the most recent thing is just God gifting me a new man, a new mm-hmm. relationship. Okay. And that honestly, I think has kind of been, you know, really the pinnacle of this year seeing that, you know, I talked earlier about God's timing being so perfect. Mm-hmm. And um, this year, you know, I started it out with <clears throat> really struggling with imposter syndrome, like okay. getting ready to publish a book saying like, uh, you know, like, should I just wait to do this until I lose all my weight? Like, mm. cult, you know, diet culture mentality, yeah. right? And then yeah. God's like, no, nope, your weight does not qualify to you to speak truth. Absolutely. Um, I qualify you as yes. God to speak truth. And so... Um, had to, you know, really struggle with that. And then, but also being super excited. So that same, you know, big, strong emotions, like I have yeah. this fear, but then I also have this passion. Yeah. So struggled through that, got the book out there. And then um, from there, then faced the next big hurdle for me was my sister who was 10 years younger than me getting married before me. And okay, okay. And I didn't have a guy yet. I, yeah. I didn't have yeah. my Johnny. And Johnny's his name, FYI, people. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I, you know, I didn't have Johnny yet. And I was very much um, struggling with God's plan. Like, mm. God, what the heck? Like, yeah. you know, and and we kind of like, I, I tell you, one of my next books is going to be called Just Stop Shitting All Over Yourself. Like, <laughs> <laughs> because we should, you know, I like, love it. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> we, um, like, I was just shooting all over that situation. Yeah. Like, I should be the first one. You yeah. know, she shouldn't have, like, I should have been able to come out of the gate and have, yes. the, you know, all that stuff. And so... God was really challenging me with that mm, kind of identity level shoulds. things yeah, and all the yeah. shoulds. And um, in the meantime, bringing just more trauma stuff from my past to the surface and okay. having to lean into my own counselor, right? Like, yeah. so strong leaders have their own leaders yeah. and um, strong counselors have their own counselors and like those type of things. And so I was like, okay, God, we got to get this dealt with. And so he got me yeah. back up on the surgery table. I talk about that a lot. God's surgery table, that needs to be another book probably. Yes. Uh, yeah, that'd be a good author. one. I have like 20 books I need to write now. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. But um, I just was, you know, God really got me back up on that surgery table and did some major, major mm. deep level. Like I feel like we were like getting bloody knuckles. We were scraping the bottom of that yeah. heart level thing. Yeah. And um, that my sister's wedding really kind of brought out. And so mm. talk about those two fierce, like at her wedding day, mm. I struggled so badly to have um, the the pain put yeah. into its place and yeah. have such immense amount of joy for her mm. that it was an internal battle. Um, thank God through God's grace. And, you know, God talks about how His grace is so sufficient, especially mm. in our time of weakness. Yeah. I did not feel that battle that day. I felt it the day before and the day after. Okay. But the day of her wedding, God's grace was so over me that I was able to fully reside in so much joy for her yeah. and enjoy all the moments. Um, so even cool. watching my dad walk her down the aisle, you mm. know, like those moments I thought I was going to be ripped apart inside, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, I was so ecstatic for her and just beyond ecstatic for my sister yeah. to have the love of her life marrying him in front of all the people that she loves and has loved her and prayed for her and, and him. Yeah. Um, so anyway, with that, that was really something that God showed me. Like these it's like a dichotomy, right? Of having the yes the two different emotions existing in one space. I love that you said that. Um but you know, so anyway, he took me through a lot of that trauma healing work and then um kind of right out of the gate of that, then I come down with COVID and <laughs> have actual oh, COVID. Oh, <laughs> boy. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, got COVID for, and it was out for three weeks. And I tell yeah. you what, in the midst of those three weeks, I um, I had been kind of talking um, online with a couple guys and yeah. was just kind of seeing like, you know, what was out there type of thing. And yeah. I just was like, this isn't it. Like, this is not what God has for me. Like, these guys definitely don't run hard after Jesus and yeah. don't, you know, are not showing pursuit like they need to. And I just felt in my gut like I was just being bored. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so um during those three weeks of COVID, I cut all ties with all the guys. Mm. Well, not all the guys, like I had like a huge amount of them. <laughs> all, <laughs> all the guys. guys. <laughs> but um cut the ties with those those two guys that I was talking to and um cut ties and then 
that week, that first week of COVID just really rested in Jesus and resting mm-hmm. and just being sick. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then that second end of that second or into the second week, then I was really praying like, okay, God, what do you want for my life this next year? Like yeah. I'm doing all these things. How do I streamline it into one? And he'd already been working on kind of the idea of like resilient ministries and stuff like that. Yeah. And then week three filed for the nonprofit and and launched it in the third week of having COVID. <laughs> While you had COVID. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you are an overachiever. You're writing a book in your master's and you have COVID and you're starting a nonprofit. Right. I got nothing to share from this year. I'm scared. <laughs> I've done nothing. No, <laughs> no, I love it. Oh yeah. So I um, <laughs> that's funny. Um, so you know, came out of COVID, and then um, literally probably like a couple weeks later, uh, met Johnny, and wow. God just really has shown a man who you know he's. We're both imperfect. We're both human. Um, yeah. we're, we're learning. It's still new. Mm. Um, but I can tell you this. Um. Doing it God's way hmm. and doing it intentional, yeah, with clarity versus hmm. confusion sets you on a completely different trajectory. Not even the same, it, it, like it's a whole different railroad station. Yeah. Like you yeah. are just on a whole different path in your relationship when you are connecting on all cylinders hmm. and doing it God's way, um, God's design for just relationship in general, yeah. and um, putting okay, God. I feel like we gotta talk about that for just yeah. a second. So you did. Spin and you've done some single ministry, mm-hmm. and I feel like there we've got some incredible listeners out there mm-hmm. that are just are not married yet, are either for what or mm-hmm. divo- you know fill yep. in the blank for whatever reason why yep. they are currently single. And I know sometimes our culture and world is not super great to that either. Yeah. So, like, what mm-hmm. would you say first of all? I guess, like, what encouragement would you just give somebody right now who's out there, like? maybe struggling or maybe they're, I mean, cause mm-hmm. I think there's that false myth too, that you have to be struggling with your singleness right. necessarily. Like yeah. that you can't be okay being right. alone and that's wrong. Right. So right. I just want to speak, what, what would you say to anybody right now in that spot? Who's in the midst of singleness and mm-hmm. trying to figure it all out? Yeah. I would really say, um, hold the space for yourself. Like we mm-hmm. were just talking about to where multiple emotions can exist within the same space. Okay. Because as I, you know, I've been single for the last like three and a half to four years okay. and, um, you know, went on a couple dates here and there, but really, truly just single. Yeah. Um, and there were many, many ups and downs to where I was like completely not about my singleness. And then there have been moments where I was like, I am so glad I'm single. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's a, again, kind of that process mentality. Like it is something that you're going to go around the bend with multiple emotions. And so, um, you know, and I think too, like even still with this relationship being new, I still have to remind myself, like I'm still learning how to be hmm. a girlfriend and yeah. potential wife, um, because I'm so used to being single now, yeah. and it's a shift. And so, anything that we're in, we have to shift our expectations for it. Yeah, our good. expectations for ourselves, our expectations for God and for others. Yeah. And so, um, the biggest encouragement I would say. Um, and maybe I can put it this way. If I could go back even hmm. a month before I met Johnny to my single self, hmm. I would say, sweet girl, God knows so perfectly what your heart needs. That's, that's huge. Wait. Yeah. On him yeah. and his timing and do the work while you are waiting. Hmm. Because I firmly believe, and as an author, this holds so much more weight for me, what I'm about to say, how you end one chapter hmm. is... It sets up the next chapter. Okay. Okay. And I wish, I don't think I ended my single career. <laughs> I don't think I ended my singleness badly mm-hmm. at all. I think I ended it um, as a warrior yeah. who was bloodied and bruised, <laughs> but also passionate about the fight that I just did. Yeah. Right. For the yeah. last four years, especially coming out of very toxic relationship. Um but I can guarantee you this. I wish I would have ended it even stronger mm. and even with mm. more purpose yeah, and, and pointedness okay. to what it could mean for my heart. That's huge. And I think so many people, whether you're a young person mm-hmm. waiting, you know, like you're, we have some teens. My daughter was on the, mm-hmm. I mean, she's 16, whether 16, 17, 18, mm-hmm. early 20s or further along, mm-hmm. just that waiting space. Sometimes we mm-hmm. want to rush, hurry and rush, no matter where where we're at yeah. in life, right? To whatever yeah. the next thing is. And we miss really mm-hmm. the cliche, but the joy and the journey of like, Absolutely. hey, what's going on right now? And what does God want to do in and through us Yeah, in these moments to get ready for the next chapter? Yeah. I love it. Absolutely. So, Jen, let me ask you this question. So we do 
probably have a lot of people who are married or in relationships. How can we best love our mm-hmm. single friends? Because I, my brother was single mm-hmm. for a while and he would come and tell me just all these horrible things that people would, you know, well-meaning. I yeah. don't think people were trying to be mm-hmm. jerks, but like would just say stuff. Like what are some things that we could just do or you wish that people would have done better mm-hmm. or do you have any advice yeah. or just encouragement on that? Yeah, I really do. I think um, I think just intentionality is a really big thing. That's something that's just really big to me in general. But especially, like, I actually just thought about this uh, yesterday. I think I was I was talking to a good friend of mine who is married, and I was really like, I was like, oh, we really didn't talk a whole lot when I was single, hmm. and now we're talking a lot more because I'm with Johnny and I'm like, Hey, help me process through this and help me process through that. And I want to be a, I want to be a good girlfriend and not just, you know, just a crazy woman. Like, like, (laughs) as we said, we all got a dose of crazy. We do. Um, Yeah. yeah. (laughs) But you know, I was just, I had that thought of like, Hmm, this is, I think this is where the divide happens because birds of a feather flock together. Um, you know, we, we connect to relatability. And so, right. What I had kind of as a check in my spirit now that I'm no longer single in the terms of completely single, like I'm not married yet, but as I'm moving toward that very intentionally, like my check in my spirit was to say, um, it's natural that you want to have more conversations with couples and married people because that's where you're at. But don't forget that you were just single Hmm. and don't forget about your single girls. That's good. Who still need to put the work in to end their chapters in a better way. Yeah. So that they can come and not just have this like great divide and no bridge. Yeah. So I think that, um, I think married people and um, single people actually, it's on both sides. Like Mm. we have to remember we're not the only relational dynamics coexisting on this earth. That's yeah. Um and so we play a part into each other because so many of my married friends, you know, girls have talked about like I feel extremely lonely because I don't have the ability to just up and go anymore. Yeah. I don't yeah. have the ability to just connect on that girlfriend level, you know. Right. And right. um then the girlfriends who are single are going like I feel extremely lonely because you've up and left me and have this other person, right? Right. So it's very much working together to communicate. Like yeah. Number one, communicate about how you communicate. Like, hey, I feel like we don't communicate as much anymore. Like, what do we, what do you think is going on there? You know? Yeah, that's good. Oh, it's because you're married now. You know, <laughs> like I don't want to, I don't want to like encroach on. You know, well, but you know, and so it's just communicate about how you communicate. Number one, and then also to just communicate like how you're feeling and saying, yeah. man, I miss you. I miss having some girl time. Like, can we schedule that in? And yeah, you know, and and just talk about. You know, teach each other, like, what is it like to be single? What is it like to be married? You know, yeah. what are you feeling is a challenge for you in that season? What's the joy for you in that season? Right, and right. we just got to get more 3D with our relationships, I think. That's so good. So good. Well, Jenna, sadly, our time is like, it goes so fast. It goes so fast. <laughs> I'm going to have to have you come back if you'll yes. come back because I want to ask more questions and I would have loved to like kind of give people a chance to say, hey, ask Jenna anything. <laughs> ask yes. Jenna time. Yes, um, I love it. But I want to know like what are you – I mean so – well, I got a couple more questions, mm-hmm. but we're going to yeah. come come in for the landing. But <laughs> as you were looking to 2021, just with your, your background with mm-hmm. counseling, coaching, life, like what are a few good things you think mm-hmm. we could carry with us in the 2021 or things you're – you're seeing maybe collectively that you're like, hey, maybe we should all ditch that in 20, <laughs> leave that in 2020, take this with you in 2021, yeah. or just what's some advice you would give us or encouragement as we're looking at a new year yeah, and how to kind of go into it well? Yeah, I think that's a good question. Uh, I think that one of them is uh, just adopting a teachable spirit. Hmm. I really think that that is so important because when we position ourselves to learn from other people yeah. on all levels, we open up an entire warehouse of opportunities mm. to have better relationship with God, with self, and with others. Yeah. Um, and it's powerful because no man is an island, right? Like we, we, yeah. we so often out of fear get so stuck in our own junk mm. that we cannot get outside of it long enough to say like, Hmm. While I'm struggling with A, I've overcome B, and you're yeah. struggling with B. I didn't know you're struggling with B. Let me help you and teach you what you've, what I've learned on B. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe A is your strength. 
Like so good. I mean, we just leave so much uh, texture to yeah. our relationships on the table by just fearing what other people think about us yeah. and comparing to other people um, and assuming what other people think. Like, I mm. maybe some good mantras for you is um, in anything you're doing, commit to the process of it versus the result. Okay, when That's it comes good. to overcoming a struggle, right? Yeah. Commit to the process, not the result. Yes. It's good. All my business people, I hear you. Business is results driven. <laughs> All my business people. We're talking emotional. Yes. Yeah. No, but, um, you know, really commit to that process it takes to grow and to just be human, right? Yeah. And then I would say the other thing, too, is really to just, um, like, have this responsibility issue that says, um, I'm not responsible for another human's emotions. Hmm. I am responsible for how I handle my own emotions in the way that affects their emotions. That's good. But I'm not responsible for them. I'm not responsible to communicate their feelings for them. Mm. I'm not responsible to fix their feelings for them. Yeah. And I'm not responsible to make their choices from those feelings for their life. Right, right. Um, We are not each other's Holy Spirits. We are fellow humans saved by grace that can point to Christ and to truth. But, man, I think just getting more of that vulnerability with each other where we're able to open up, mm-hmm. share the hard stuff, share the great stuff, encourage yeah. each other, um, and not be, you know, not get in there and try to do it for them. Yeah. I think that's so good, Jenna, because I think this year, right, when all of the mm-hmm. quarantine, mm-hmm. all the stuff, and there's just all this isolation mm-hmm. and whether you were isolated by yourself yeah. or is- mm-hmm. feeling alone within, even if you had other people with mm-hmm. you, um, I think the need for community, and I think some of us have realized, hey, we really need community more. Mm-hmm. Some of us maybe don't haven't realized that mm-hmm. yet and are still trying to make it on our own. Mm-hmm. I guess what would you say? I mean, both of the things you already said are such great reminders of that. But if somebody's just really struggling with, I don't even know how to find community or how do I find mm-hmm. people or how do I what would you mm-hmm. tell somebody? Do you have any advice like just how to find some pe- people? Yeah. Especially to because there is the real you know, Absolutely. fear of the pandemic still, and we're not mm-hmm. completely clear of all of that yet. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, we are making strides <laughs> in the right yes. direction, and we'll get to do some more things in 2021. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are still people that, for whatever reasons and various reasons, are still needing to be more careful and be at home, and a community can be hard. What yeah. would you got yes. any pro tips on? <laughs> to get some relationships or <laughs> community. <laughs> Jenna didn't know what she was getting herself. She was just asking all my I, random questions. I was asking it. my random nope, questions. I love it. Your, girl, you know this how I roll. <laughs> I love it. This is how it. I do. Um, yeah, I would really... With Okay, so of course with the pandemic, that makes things definitely a little bit harder, of course, mm-hmm. like you were saying. Um, you know, online connection is great, but it does not replace in-person connection, right? Yeah. So yeah. whenever we're able to... At yes. the levels we're able to within yes. the pandemic and safety and all that good stuff. Um, I really, really believe that the way to build true community is serving people and serving with people. Hmm. Um, I mean, that's how Jesus did. Yeah. You know, yeah. he came on the scene, served as a servant leader, and yeah. then served with his disciples. That's good. And. I think that when we're intentional with who we surround ourselves with on our inner circles Mm -hmm. is big. Um, But I think that so many people, especially with social media, like we just want to go so wide with our friend base that we we forsake going deep and building those community connections. Um, So picking a few, going deep with them. It's good. um, Getting a few more. Yeah. Going somewhat deep with them, you know, and then just serving with them and really just saying like, okay, whether that's in nonprofit organizations, whether that's in churches, whether that's in just your business that you work in, yeah. like, you know, where are the needs around me? Um, teach me what I can do to help. And even just the question, how can I help? Yeah. Is huge. Right. Um, and so really just getting out from behind the curtain of our own feelings is going to be mm-hmm. really big to help us build community. That's good. Well, Jenna, I hope you will come back soon and talk to us more about know. emotions and feelings because I think we've just barely scratched the surface because <laughs> we all have emotions and feelings. And if we're all quite honest, we all have a lot of them yeah, and yeah. just working through all that. But Jenna, okay, one last question for you. So yeah. the show is called Now That's Something Good. Yes. So share something good with us. Just It can be whatever. I mean, there's no qualifier. It could be a good story, a good joke, a new product. I don't know. Like I love it. Now that's something good. 
Hmm. Um, I would say now that's something good that we are going to be in 2021 tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, 2020. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Love no, it. I think like just even with that vein, like change is good. Yeah. Change yeah. is a good thing. Yeah. Um, what, let me rephrase that. What we do with change, hmm. that's something good. I love it. I love it. Jenna, thank you so much for being here with You're me so today. Welcome. It's been we'll so do it fun. Again. We'll do it again for sure. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks, friend. Bye. Wow. What an incredibly fun conversation with my friend, Jenna. She shared so many amazing nuggets with us from her story and what she's learned along the way. Make sure to check out the show notes to find links to all the things we mentioned and to connect with Jenna. I know she'd love to hear from you. So make sure to go follow Jenna on Facebook or Instagram. Next week, we are going to hear the story of a friend we were supposed to have on back in November, but due to our personal COVID adventure and the holidays, we had to postpone hearing from her till now. She's got an incredible story of saying yes, even when it doesn't really make sense or is hard. So make sure to come back next Wednesday to hear me chat with our friend Rhonda. And would you do us a favor? If you were encouraged by today's episode, would you go share it with a friend? Maybe you know someone who's struggling with some of the same things we talked about or someone who just needs a little something good in their day. Would you take a moment and go share it with them? It means so much to us. Well, until next week, friends, keep looking for the extraordinary in the everyday ordinary. We believe if we keep our eyes wide open, even in the midst of the very hardest things and the very best things, God will still continue to show us something good along the way. We'll see you right back here next week.